Yes, it's time for one of those videos. You know, being trapped in your house for several months can make you do some wacky things, such as actually buying and logging over a day of playtime on Modern Warfare. I'm already bored of it, by the way. Playing through all the GTA 4 stories for the first time. These were pretty cool, I like them. And of course, going back to an old game used to speedrun and improving your time by well over a minute. I can assure you I would have never done this if life was normal. Kirby 64 any percent was the very first speed game slash category I ever learned. And honestly, I was never really great at it. While the game may seem extremely simple, there are a lot of ways time can easily be lost and it is heavily RNG based. I spent a while practicing, relearning levels, and getting back into the feel of the game so I can improve my PB. For a long time, my main goal on Kirby 64 was a 1 hour 2 minute time. My time before I came back to this game was a 103.18. After practice and a couple of attempts, I finally achieved that sought after goal I had. I got a time of 102.55. It felt really strange though, because I knew I was not happy with this even though it was my goal. The next day, I had an extremely lucky run that got perfect RNG on Miracle Matter and I beat that 102.55 by over a minute. My new time was 101.51. This brought me all the way to 5th on the leaderboard. Okay, there were actually two Japanese runners who delayed their times for some reason, so I would actually be 7th. Yeah, 5th does sound a bit too good to be true right now. A few years ago, I wouldn't even be able to fathom getting a time like this on that game, but I finally did. And guess what? I'm still not happy with it now. My new goal is a sub-101, and I'm really hoping I can achieve it. I actually cannot believe I'm interested in this game again. It does truly blow my mind. I would have never guessed I'd ever come back to this game like this. When discussing this category in the Kirby speedrunning Discord, the topic of Powerless came up. I attempted to do this in Kirby Superstar and made a video on it, but unfortunately, it's technically impossible, but you can still sorta of do it and get the point across. I've always known that Powerless was completely possible in Kirby 64 since there's no point in the game where you are ever forced to use abilities, but I just never thought of doing it in this game. Mainly for one reason how boring it could potentially be. Kirby 64 is a game many people dislike. A lot of people consider the game to be slow, boring, and overall not enjoyable. I love and hate the game at the same time. I am extremely nostalgic for the game as it is one of the very first I've ever played, but playing it over and over really puts the obvious flaws the game has right in your face. The running speed is incredibly slow, yes, this is considered running. The ability combining gimmick is weird, there's a bunch of pointless mechanics like Kirby only having a set amount of time to fly. This is literally the only Kirby game it happens in by the way. If my rant sounds familiar to you, my first video on this channel goes over this exact topic about how flawed Kirby 64 is, and I go into a lot more detail about it on there, if you want to watch it, but please don't watch it, I'm already ashamed of a video I only made 8 months ago. Knowing how flawed this game is, taking up one of the main mechanics of the game will obviously make it much, much worse. This game was not made to be played without abilities. You can say that about any Kirby game, but this one stands out in particular. The main gimmick of this entire game was to mix abilities. I knew I was in for something that would feel like a very long drag. To make the playthrough more interesting, I decided to time myself on it and attempt to go as fast as possible. This ties directly back to my previous video because this is definitely a meme speedrun, one which I'd never take seriously ever. One more thing I want to point out. While I normally play on original hardware, I'm going to be playing on the Wii Virtual Console version for this video since it is the speedrunning version pretty much because the load times are much quicker. Enough talking, let's begin. Yeah, this is what I have to deal with for the next hour and a half. Mini boss was simple, so was the waddle do. During this playthrough, I'll be taking advantage of double stars quite a bit as they do double the damage. Ugh. Adeline was fairly simple. I inhaled the... I don't want to know what this thing is and I used it against the Ice Dragon. This fight did end up taking much longer than usual without powers. Yup. Nothing really notable here, except for the fact that I can still do the hover skip thing since no powers are required to do it. After years of beating DDD in like 10 seconds, I forgot how long this fight was normally. I completely forgot about this weird possessed state that he's in, it's very strange. Getting rid of all the saplings during the wispy fight took much longer because the apples kept getting destroyed. RNG was also pretty bad here, but the fight was nothing too challenging, just a lot of waiting. Oh yeah, and the double stars are very useful here, as they can go through two of the thorns rather than one. I beat wispy 10 minutes and 34 seconds in. Running and jumping again, also a lot of puffing. The mini boss was quite Quick and easy, but this is all the scroller man that I hate it so much. It is a nice break, sure, and it also gives you a bit of time to mess around and do the Wii VC bugs, which include moonwalking and cancelling the ladder animation, but it really does drag this level out and it is completely uneven. I feel like this room could have been much nicer if it wasn't an auto scroller and just a room you could go up at your own pace. A long run. Also, a lot of puffing once again. Because these levels take forever to get through while playing like this, I start to not even focus on gameplay and start paying attention to how nice these areas look. The aesthetics of each level in this game are really nice. I love the ancient ruin theme they went for here. I am playing a game though, so let's move on. During an 80% run, you completely skipped this first part with double fire, so it was nice to see again, I guess. I almost swallowed the fire enemy out of habit here, but then realized what I was doing. 
completely worth it. Did some repeating obstacles, the swimming sections were basically the exact same as they would be in any percent. The enemy patterns are not random here, so you can stay in the same position and mash A and not get hit by any of the fishbone. I was able to do the auto scroller skip thing by flying up and damage boosting to keep flight. This level is basically the exact same as any percent, except for the fact that I couldn't spam single fire in some sections. Did the mini boss, climbed up, and headed to Pix. Pix was no challenge. I used to struggle with doing this boss fast, but it really isn't that hard if you get good patterns. The pieces that match the color of the diamonds deal more damage, so if you take advantage of this, you can easily two cycle the boss. Optimally, in a speedrun, you would one cycle this boss, but you have a double star to spit out there, which you don't have here. I beat Pix 23 minutes and 7 seconds in. This beginning section was the same, but then I skipped the fire enemy. This flying room is also pretty much the same, except for the fact that I couldn't use fire at the end. These frogs are very annoying. I did some more walk running. This mini boss takes a while to beat since the enemy spawned underneath it, which is pretty annoying. I started noticing that a lot of the obstacles in this game repeat over and over. It gets old really fast. I took advantage of the water under the bridge since he runs slightly faster on it. I did the crab mini boss, which has a similar setup to the 3-1 mini boss where the enemy spawned underneath. The waddle do raft section was obviously the same. I did a similar strat to the one in any percent during the room with the invincibility candy, which was keeping an enemy in Kirby's mouth so he doesn't plop whenever he hits the ground. The only difference between this one and the one in any percent is that I used a random enemy here rather than my star from the fire ability. The log room was a bit annoying, but I did make it through relatively quickly. Don't you just love walking on the beach and getting shot by cannons in the process? Walking 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 thank you ddd another section which you don't normally see in any percent did the mini boss this log room is fine because if you know the timing you won't ever get hit by them it's pretty simple to avoid once you've done it a couple times ah uh, yes water levels i love them a lot this level was the most similar to how you'd play it in any percent you wouldn't have an ability here so you would swim while holding the fish over your head since it's faster during the next couple rooms you'd get bombed for the mini boss but unfortunately i couldn't and man this mini boss without bomb is horrible this boss goes in a circle while underwater that's that's bad. I got hit three times here, which obviously made my health very low. I finished off the level from here and tried to get a max tomato, but completely missed and got an enemy info card. If you are wondering what the card was, I actually got two by accident through a plane. A Pompey and a Terran. I got hit by Acro while he was doing a flip. I had a feeling I was going to die, but I didn't. This boss feels like such a drag without abilities, especially when you accidentally destroy the rocks and miss your hits. His second phase isn't that bad, but I still kept missing. Eventually, I beat him and headed on to Neostar. The time was 39.06. This room was unchanged from the any percent run, except for the fact that I went for food and was clinging on to my life. Next room was also pretty much the same, but I skipped fire. I was doing pretty well, but then took two hits in the miniboss and died shortly after. Yeah, unfortunately, Deathless was dead. No pun intended. You can get a lot of momentum off these logs when they swing, but it quickly runs out. I hopped along with the invincibility candy and finished off the level. Just like the one in 3-2, this Waddle Dee cart section was obviously unchanged. As I fell, I quickly inhaled to avoid the plop on the ground. I hate these frogs. I did the cannon room, the room after, and without fire, you do start to notice some of the platforming challenges that aren't really apparent. The mini boss was pretty quick, but my health got very low. Luckily, there's a max tomato in the room after. This room was the same, except for the fact that I had to wait an extra cycle since I couldn't double fire through the two pillars that pushed together. Jumping is fun. I guess. If you jump underneath the center of enemies in this game, you don't take a hit. Just a weird mechanic I thought I'd mention because I did end up using it quite a bit. However, it is very easy to mess up. I probably did it more than once. These next rooms were just simple platforming stuff. I jumped over the Kirby rocks and finished off the stage. The falling rocks outside the volcano spawn randomly, so they are very annoying to avoid. This first inside room was simple. The DDD section was obviously unchanged. The room after felt like a complete drag, but the room that pushes in on you felt kind of interesting without abilities, I guess. Nothing hard, but it did feel a little bit more challenging in a way. I flew up after this and headed to Magma. This boss can be very slow without powers, but luckily I was able to make double stars while waiting for his moves, which did deal damage a lot quicker. The RNG I got after this wasn't so great, but it didn't really affect the length of the fight that much, it was still a lot quicker than I expected. I completely missed the shard like an idiot. Neo Star was done, 55 minutes and 49 seconds in. Running through more, repeating obstacles, climbed the ladders, and I know I don't have to say this, but yes, Waddle Dee section completely unchanged, you get a point. I used double stars against a chili mini boss and slowly made my way through the room after. The last room here was definitely one of the coolest ones to play without the build. I love the Butter Building remix that plays in the stage. I just thought I'd mention that. Some of the areas in this level are pretty boring, but I don't think it's that bad. At least you have this banger track to listen to. I hate these things, they are equivalent to the frogs. I absolutely hate the mini boss here. It is just as bad with powers as it is without. The enemies that spawn are annoying, the patterns it decides to go are completely random. It is extremely easy to take hits here, which I did and ended up being at the lowest possible health. I grabbed a max tomato at the end, of course. I always wonder what this place is. Is it supposed to be a mall or something? I don't know for sure, but this is probably the most nostalgic video game level ever for me. I don't know what it is about it. This level just always stuck with me. I did the escalators and the elevators, and man, this mini boss is annoying with other abilities. They knew exactly what they were doing here. If you try to throw the enemies upwards rather than spitting them out, you can't because they fade away as soon as you hold them up. Evil. No need to press the buttons, some more running, some more running while avoiding cannons. 
left. After that, you get sent to the factory, and I'm sorry I have to mention this again, but this DDD section is unchanged. Last time you will ever hear that from me, I swear. The Firebird mini-boss was relatively quick and easy, I did the super scary room where the ceiling is pushing into you. This time it is a lot slower since you have to wait for more cycles because you don't have fire. I climbed upwards and finished off the level and headed to... I headed to HR. I hate... HR. I don't know why, this boss literally isn't even that hard. It is very RNG based, but it isn't really that hard. But I kept messing around during the HR fight during the second phase. This caused not one, but two deaths. I am really stupid and have no clue what I was thinking. Strangely, the first phases were fine, but I was really rushing on the second half. I cannot believe I'm using plural words here. I really shouldn't have to be. This, this definitely should not have happened twice. On the third attempt, I actually learned my lesson and got through HR normally, while unfortunately losing several minutes beforehand. My exit time here was 1 hour 17 minutes and 18 seconds. The first level of Ripple Star, the 1-1 clone. Main difference being the miniboss here was much more annoying than the one in 1-1. One one. I still find the second level of Ripple Star to be creepy to this day. The music doesn't help with that either. While this game is very nostalgic to me, I can't lie and say this stuff didn't creep me out a bit when I was younger. I know I'm getting a bit sidetracked here, but that's because there's not really much else to say here. I was just sort of walking, swimming, breaking blocks, and leaving. The boss rush level. This was much slower without an ability since all I can do is inhale and spit out enemies pretty much. The rooms are all pretty much the same here, so let's move on to the end. Miracle Matter, the fake final boss and the ending here. It starts off fairly well with me one cycling the ice phase. I got two hits off Spark and also one cycled the rock phase while taking a hit in the process. The hit did feel kind of required. I finished off Spark, I somehow managed to one cycle bomb, I guess I was just really lucky. I got two hits on fire, okay here I was an idiot because I only got two hits off color despite it being really easy to one cycle. I finished off fire, I got two hits on needle, I finished off color, lastly I finished off needle. Miracle matter in this challenge was done. My time was 1 hour, 25 minutes, and 54 seconds. Yes, there it is. Fake ending cutscene, and as I'm watching this, I'm questioning why I was such an idiot during the HR fights. This run could have easily been minutes better, but, you know, whatever. I'm probably never ever going to touch this again. This will annoy me for quite a bit though. While this playthrough did open my eyes to the level design of this game, and was challenging in some spots, I can't lie and say this was a blast because it wasn't. Watching Kirby run on my CRT screen for an hour brought on a significant amount of pain. If you're going to be playing this game, make sure you're playing it correctly. This is correct.